Hello everyone. Here is another exploration of the Westlick Performer Eurorack Sequencer. And today we're going to take a closer look at CV recording or CV capturing on the Westlick, which takes place on curved tracks. So you have to set up one or two or more of your tracks as curved tracks, and these tracks will capture incoming CV. So first we're going to take a look at um, the project page, and the thing to note is that you have to assign an input to capture. So right now I've got Immutable Stages LFO going into CV3 input of the performer, and I've got that assigned. And now um, I've programmed the rest of my tracks um, already. So right now I've got three tracks on the performer all running the exact same pattern to three oscillators. And this is what it sounds like. So if we go into the performance page and solo each one, this is oscillator one playing this pattern. This is oscillator two playing the exact same pattern tuned to with oscillator one, um, basically an octave above the first one. And this is track three playing the exact same pattern on an oscillator that's tuned an octave below the first one. So altogether, three oscillators playing the identical pattern. So three identical patterns and then what we're going to do is we're going to capture some CV and then we're going to route these CV to control different things on each of these three tracks. And we're going to start to get them all out of phase with each other, which is going to be very cool. Next, we're going to take a look at the other tracks that I've set up to be curved tracks. So track five is a track I've set up as a four step pattern. And each step is running at a rate of one bar per step. And what this track is going to be routed to do is to turn on the recording on the performer. So we're going to do that right now. So in order to assign this track to control recording, we go to the routing page. And I've already set the targets, right? Um, we just got to activate them. So target is record on and off. And the source is going to be CV output 5. Commit. The routing has been activated. So now, if we go back to look at track 5, and we're going to keep our eye on this play LED, it's going to turn red when, it when it's activated to record. So you'll see that bar 1 is nothing. Bar 2 is the voltage offset to turn on record. So. Bar two, it is in record mode now. Bar three goes back to playback mode. And bar four as well. So as a result of this routing, the performer is going to be recording something every four bars. What it's going to record it um, and where it's going to record to, well, what it's re going to record is the, the CV input, right? This LFO that's coming in on CV3 right now. Where it's going to record to is whatever track you've um, picked here. So right now, if we are looking at track six, we'll play and watch bar two. It's now capturing this LFO and then playing back, playing it back for three bars. Okay, that's pretty cool. If I go to track seven, I'm going to record another incoming uh, loop of CV. Bar one, nothing. Bar two. Cool. We'll just keep it running. Go to bar, uh, go to track eight. Wait for four bars. And now track eight's gonna start recording something. Great. So now I've got three tracks with three different looking curves. Cool. And that's how basically how CV uh, capturing works in this case, right? And I've set it up so that the performer itself is 
triggering the record function. So this is all done with the internal routing. Um, so now we're going to go back to routing because now we've got these curves to play with. We've got these curves to assign to things. So in going back to the routing page, uh, my next target I've set as the clock divisor. So I'm going to modulate the clock divider of track one with the output of track six, CV out six, commit. So now when I play back, this curve is going to mess with the clock of this track. So here we go. This is what this track sounds like on its own. And as long as I'm viewing this track, it's going to keep uh, recapturing incoming CV every four bars, which is fine for my purpose right now. So this is what's happening on track one as modulated by track six. Cool. I'm going to go back to my routing page, go to the next target. I've set the gate probability to be modulated by track seven, and I want this to go to track two. So now what's going to happen on track two is that you're going to start to get rests and, and note dropout because I'm messing with the gate probability, right? How often the gate is actually going to fire. So here we go. Oops. Great. Let's do one more routing. And that is the first step modulation. So I want track eight to control the starting step of the pattern on track three. So I assign track three as the target track. And the source of modulation is the CV output of track eight, right? And the target is the first step. So commit. If we go look at track three, you're now going to see the starting step arrow jump all over the place because it's being modulated by this curve. And if we solo that, this pattern is starting to vary depending on the first step. So starting with three identical patterns, I've used CV recording or CV capturing and the internal patch bay to create variations and movements in these patterns. And while it's the performance doing this thing that I set it up to do, right? Um, you know, we can be on track six and have track six keep updating its curve as it is doing now. And in the meantime, we can actually go back to any of these tracks and change other things on it, right? So for example, if I'm on track two, right now it's just running forward, but as it's playing, I can set it to go backwards to add even more variation or have it go ping pong or do a random walk. So it's now going, doing a random walk sequence and its gate probability being uh, controlled by the curve on track six. So this is my little demonstration patch of CV recording and a little bit more of the routing menu. Um, hope that helped illuminate the possibilities of the performer a little bit better. And um, in the previous video, I took you through the entire 
a list of targets, of possible targets, right? So what else can you modulate in the module? So in a way, the performer is a module where you can sequence the sequencer, right? It can, it can sequence itself. You can use these curve tracks to change um, what pattern is playing on each track because each track can have up to 16 patterns. So I'm only using one pattern right now. I'm only using one pattern on this tr on each track. And already with a little bit of internal routing, it's giving me all these variations. So hopefully it's um, it's been helpful and see you next time.